Hey guys, Stinky Kitty Game Dev here, and in this little two-part series, I want to cover something that I've never really seen anywhere before, so you might find it interesting. But basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be able to take these properties and modify them at runtime. So this, and well, in my case, I have a very specific use for this, whereas if you saw the last video that I uploaded before this, I created a pose adjustment widget. So basically, you know, you can go through and you would do this. So I take my base pose, adjust it, and previously I would have to hit save to file, go to that file, copy its contents, and put them into these poses. Well now, I can instead automate that. So I have an example function here that I've already actually made, and this is basically kind of the setup that we're going for. So we want to have the property name, we want to give it its value, and we need the object that we're going to actually apply it to. So this isn't going to be on a per actor instance, this is going to be on the actual class. So for example, the firearm class that I showed you is actually this M4. So if we make the change, it'll show up here. Now, the first way I'm going to show you, well, the first part is going to actually, well, this is going to be done in two different ways. So the first one is going to be kind of a little more automated, so to speak. So there's a tiny bit less that you have to do, but you're limited to certain types, such as uh, numeric, booleans, and strings. So you're kind of restricted. You don't have the option to use structures such as vectors, transforms, and all that. That's what we're going to be doing in the next video. So it's basically the same thing, but you're doing it in a different way. So it's kind of more direct. So to begin, what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually take our fire rate, and we're going to change this from 800 to something like 200. And we want to do that by default. So how do we do that? Well, all we can do is here I have my static library class here, just so I can call it from Blueprint. And I'm going to go to the bottom. We're going to have Blueprint Callable. I'm going to give it the category of tutorial. And I'll just do static, because remember, we want it to be a static function, void, and let's see, what can we call it? Let's just call it change property value. Okay, so what all do we need to pass in so it knows what it is? First off, we need the object, so we'll just do a U object. Uh, we need the name of the property, so in this case, fire rate RPM, and we could take in the value of which we want to replace it with. So we're going to have three properties here. So the first one's going to be a U object. So U object, object. Then we want the property name. So const f name. And let's just call it, we'll do it by reference, property name. And then what are you whining about? Okay, maybe we need a different property. That should be fine test and whatever we'll do it later and then float or wait is it a float yes it's a float so float a uh, new value oh i'm blind as a bat so property name there we go go ahead and create the definition and i'm going to move it down and out of the way everything else if i can go a little farther we okay so now that we're here what all we need to do we need to get the object so we want to confirm that that is valid we need two different things from that we need the class so that way we can get the class default object then we need to get access to the property so that way we can actually modify said property so first off let's check it so if object is valid we want to get the class so if you class, class equals object, get class. And then from there, we want to get the default object. So for example, class, get default object, and it returns, I believe it just returns a U object, yeah. So if U object, default object equals class, get default object. So once we have these, we can go ahead and make it a constant just so it shuts up. Once we have these, we're kind of ready to move forward. We have all the key ingredients, so to speak, of what we need. So from here, we need to get the property. And from there, we need to go through and set it. So we need to make sure we set it on a couple of different things. So basically, we're going to be setting it on the default object from the class. 
I'm not sure if that's a good way to visualize it, but it is kind of what it is. So we're going to get the class and let's see, it's, let's get the property. So find property by name and that takes in an F name. So property name, and let's look at what it returns. So it returns an F property. So we can do this a couple of different ways. Uh, in this case, ours is going to be a float. So for example, we'll just go ahead and write it out as default. So F property, let's just call it property. And does it return a pointer? Yes, it does. Then from here, let's look at some of the functions. So for example, if we search for set, you don't really have anything that is of use. So you can set the flags, but that's kind of it. And then if we change the type to something like F float property, which ignore that for now, hopefully it'll still show us. And we just search for set. You can see now we have functions like set property value and all of that. So we can actually set what we need. So what we need to do is we need to cast the return type of here to be of the type that we want. So in our case, F float property. So we're gonna search for cast field to the type of F float property. And that works the same as a normal cast. And now we can call set property value in container to actually set the value. So the, what we want to set is going to be on the object, or sorry, the default object. And then we should have the new value. So we take our default object and we pass in new value. So all in all, that should allow us to overwrite whatever we put in there. So let's go ahead and give that a try. I'm going to go ahead and close down the editor and relaunch. Alrighty, back in the editor. So let's go ahead and call, yep, change property value. So I'm just going to do it when I press the button. Make my life a little easier. So change property value. Here we have the object here. So in my case, that's going to be a firearm, which I already just have. Actually, that's over here. Then we have the property name. So let's go ahead and make a literal name. And in our case, it is going to be the fire rate RPM. So it's exactly going to be this guy. So we can just copy it, paste it in. And then we have the new value. So I'm going to do, let's do 250, something a lot slower. So compile save. Our default value is 800. Let's go ahead and hit play. Let me go to full auto and I'll spray. So that's the normal fire rate. Now we'll go ahead and save to file, like so, close it, and go back to the M4, and you can now see the fire rate RPM is set to 250. So you can see it doesn't have the uh, revert back to default. So if I hit play and I go back to full auto, you still have that high fire rate. But if I compile and save, you can see now it has the option to revert back. So now when I hit and go to full auto, you can see the fire rate is drastically reduced. So that's how we can go through and easily change different types to be of whatever value we want. So you can do this really at runtime. Now, this is not something you can do on a packaged game. This is more so, like I kind of mentioned earlier, for use with whatever editor tools you may try to make. So you don't really have, um, let's see, what's the word? So when you package the game, you don't really have the ability to compile blueprints because all that functionality is actually built inside of the editor. So even though, you, you know, you, I'm not using anything editor, yeah, I can't speak, editor related to modify these properties, when, if someone tries to do that at runtime, let's say they get the address of the function they go through and, you know, they call this. Nothing's going to happen. You know, the value may quote unquote change in memory, but it's not actually going to affect anything. So it's kind of useless to try to cheat it that way. But yeah. That's really kind of how this works. Uh, it's very simple, not all that difficult, but in the next video we'll go through and we'll actually show you the limitations of this setup. So for example, if I want to use a structure and I switch it to F struct property, we lose the ability to simply call set property value like so. So we have to do it a more manual way, which is going to be going through the actual memory addresses or getting pointers to the memory addresses and modifying them directly. So that'll be in the next video. So I'll see you then. And if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series and a Conquest game mode series. 
available. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord. That's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next one.